This Anybody has anything will at all? Now be recorded. Can we do a brief update? I mean, just a, a recap as to what yes. lessons you expect. Jenny? So this this year we're doing lessons one and lesson two, um, and remember those can be done either um, on site as part of the regular religious education program, or they can be done um, they can be sent out um, for the parents to do the lessons. And there's specific parent-led lessons in the Virtues platform. So does anybody have any questions for Jenny at this point? And it can be also questions about safe environment if you need something brief to ask her about a procedure or something like that. So now's your chance. OK. Well, anybody can, y'all can always call our office, of course, and you can reach out to me directly via email as well. Um, so just know that I'm here to serve in any way I can and always here to answer any questions. So thank you so much. Jenny, thank you. Thank you All for right. being so accessible. It's great. Thank you very You're much. You're welcome. Okay. Y'all take care. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, now, uh, Andy, did you want to talk about the virtual conference coming up? Yeah, happy to, Michelle. Good morning, everybody. So our virtual Eucharistic Revival Conference is coming up next week. Um, it's something that our Archdiocese has supported and even we're one of the sponsors. Um, been working with Virtual Catholic Conference and Dr. Tim O'Malley, the McGrath Institute. Uh, many of you know Dr. Tim from his being with us for catechist conferences in the past and he's been a great friend of the Archdiocese. But he helped develop this conference around his recent book, Becoming Eucharistic People which is a really beautiful book uh, talking about the importance of building a Eucharistic culture in our parishes or renewing that culture. Um, it's a great book for the revival. So I, I do highly encourage, I'm not making any money off of this, um, but I do highly encourage you to, to look at the book and, and see if it might be something that you'd be interested in getting others or you know doing small groups on. Um, they have a great discount. Ave Maria Press has a great bulk order discount too for 100 books or more. So that's available. But this whole conference next week, we already have, I think, Michelle, it's it's getting close to 6,500 folks that yep. have registered for I asked us. for an update. We were at 63.30 yesterday. I have not received this morning's update, but. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's growing a lot. And I, I'd say for us as leaders, um, you know, think of this in similar terms as the catechist conference. You know, it, obviously it's different and it doesn't have kind of the basic kind of certification aspects and things that you would do when planning a catechist conference, but it does have a lot of great content that can help with ongoing certification, ongoing formation needs. Um, and if there's significant interest in this, I think Michelle, you know, we we could develop something for PCLs to use if you wanted some type of form that we can develop based on the conference, uh, similar to what we've done with catechist conferences in the past. So if there's if there's interest in us kind of doing that, where you could maybe hand it off to your catechists and say, tell me what you watched, and you know, similar to previous conferences, it's it's going to be shorter presentations. I think I think still folks kind of aiming for maybe 30 minutes, um, so it's not as long as maybe a normal uh, session that we would ask for within our certification framework, but we would encourage, you know, still that there can be some follow-up or reflection after the, the course and it can can go towards, especially with intermediate and advanced certification uh, needs, um, as well as maybe some basic certification, at least around sacraments and some of those areas. So depending on the talk, so we can we can take a closer look at that and develop that for you. But thank you for everything that you've been doing thus far, just getting the word out, um, if you could keep up your prayers for the conference itself and uh, just for the whole Eucharistic revival. So registration, again, is free. And I think Benny is sharing a link for that. And it's going to be open all through the conference. There's going to be some live Q&A sessions available during the conference Thursday night, Friday night, or Thursday afternoon, maybe some Thursday evening, Friday. And then Saturday morning, there, there are two live sessions the last one actually is a session I'm moderating with some other diocesan leaders just talking about how to make the revival personal um, and, how to, and how dioceses are kind of helping with this. It's going to be a lot about praying about next steps, um, what we're discerning at the diocesan level. Um, so, yeah, I'm really excited about it. It's, it's a great kind of first entry point, I think, for a lot of people when it comes to the Eucharistic revival, just knowing what is this about? What is this three-year 
process that the bishops have called for. How do we, how do we enter into this? Um, it's really helping that. The content is gonna be available. I'm, I'm telling you this, uh, don't necessarily kind of spread the word too early, but it's gonna be available through the whole revival period for free. So folks aren't gonna to have to purchase like a long time pass to kind of have access to this content after the weekend. Uh, but we do encourage as many of you to, to not only register, but to spread the word for other people to register for it and make, make the most of the conference. But content, you know, after conference is over, you can use it for small groups, for other sessions as you're kind of moving forward with the revival. It's really a great, great way for parishes, maybe just to take some, take a couple talks and uh, you know, get people together uh, to lean into this revival a little bit more as we're moving forward. But Michelle, am I missing anything in terms of just kind of the basics of the revival conference? It's, it's English presentations. There's also gonna be Spanish presentations and then everything in English will be subtitled as well in Spanish. There will be some live panels in Spanish and our, our former colleague and friend, Catherine Angulo will be leading a couple of those Spanish sessions. Um, so we're really grateful to Catherine and the, the whole McGrath Institute who's put up put a lot of work into this. Michelle? Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, Andy. We just had a question about uh, people who had logged in and registered that I assume that VCC at some point at begin, probably beginning of next week will be sending in uh, login information to all those registrants. I will verify that and I will put that back into the chat log um, after I get the answer as to when they're going to be sending in their login information to those registrants. So, but we're at 63.30 right now. So hopefully um, we can bump that up by the end of today and spread that information. Benny, as we said, has posted the link for all the marketing materials. So we have marketing materials that are bulletin inserts in English and Spanish. We have them in color. We have them in black and white. We also have individual speaker graphics. So you can go through that file and say, hey, I know my people know this name or start promoting that all on your social media platform. That's going to be our push from now into the conference. We're going to be posting different things on our social media every day uh, as to the different speakers that are going to be there. There's, they're all top notch nationally known speakers that are doing this. So take advantage of this. This is going to be a great conference from now going forward for the three years we're going to be adding content each of the following years through the eucharistic revival and um i i can't I don't think we can get better partners than virtual catholic conference because we know they do this not just because it's a business but it's a ministry to them this is what they do that bring the information to the people of god that need it so spread it to not just your catechist spread it get it in out there for the bulletin uh get it out there in your social media for everybody in your parish to take advantage of it because that's the goal is to get everybody understanding the eucharist and what god has given us in this great gift so so that's the eucharistic congress take a look at all the marketing materials if you have any questions please get with me um and we can walk you through anything you hopefully need so so thank hey, you michelle. For that, Andy. michelle can i add one thing about the yep. eucharistic revival missionaries um ah, yes please great yeah so um, as you all know, I think Archbishop Hartmeyer had called for each parish to nominate at least a couple Eucharistic revival missionaries from your parish that would, um, many of them were commissioned during the Eucharistic Congress, but we've had several parishes still nominating folks. And we've, we've sent the commissioning prayer to pastors that the Archbishop had said pastors can, can do this at the parish on behalf of the Archbishop to commission folks as Eucharistic revival missionaries. I just wanted to let you all know as PCLs, it's not too late for parishes to, to add Eucharistic revival missionaries. We're still gonna be asking parishes. We have a little over maybe half of our parishes thus far, over a hundred people that are, are with us as Eucharistic revival missionaries. This year, we're doing a, basically a path of formation and accompaniment with these folks. We just had our first virtual call last week and, um, presented about the revival, but we're gonna be bringing different speakers in. We're gonna have formation around the Eucharist, formation around Kerygma, with the idea that we're also kind of giving some, some tools and uh, different things to think about as we approach the parish year of the revival, which begins with Corpus Christi next year. So we're in the diocesan year this year, um, but it's a really great opportunity for parishes just to have that closer connection, 
have folks that are really dedicated to praying for the revival as well as receiving information about what's happening, what's happening at the diocesan level that we can bring back to our parish and use for our own discernment of next steps of what are we being called to do for the revival. So it's not about us dictating things to these folks. It's just, it's really about parishes having folks on the ground that are connected with what's happening at the diocesan level can bring that back and serve as catalysts in your parish for the revival with you and your teams, with the pastor ultimately. So if you don't, if you know that your parish hasn't selected folks, um, feel free to let me know if you need us to kind of nudge your pastor or just speak to your pastor about it and say, hey, um, are we gonna kind of have, have some folks that are nominated? It has to be pastor nominated in the end. And we're not, we're not forcing people to do this, but we're really highly encouraging them because I think it'll just be a great way to build that awareness about the revival and start set, setting more of a fire for the revival to take more hold here in the archdiocese. Vince, I see you un, unmuted. Do you have a question? Uh, no. Okay, great. Well, that's all I wanted to share, so we're good. Okay, well, since Vince has his my oh, up, I'm going to go ahead to go to Vince next. He wants to do a brief uh, announcement on the upcoming men's conference at St. Clair of Assisi. Go for it, Vince. Thank you. Uh, so I was going to say, man, what an announcement to follow up. Uh, St. Clair's is also doing a conference, but we have exactly no nationally acclaimed speakers. Um, lap track. So we're going to be doing a men's conference on October 29th that we're actually pretty excited about. Um, we're going to be taking this as an opportunity to kind of take some of the most respected men in our community um, and work with them closely, disciple them a little bit more, and kind of turn um, uh, what I would say a lot of uh, uh, water cooler wisdom into some fairly, oh, perfect, um, into some, some fairly kind of hard-hitting men's talks. Um, and we would like all other parishes to know that we're doing this and we'd like uh, the men of their parishes of, of your parishes to feel more than welcome to come and register for our conference um, we are shooting for at least a hundred guys uh, we'd love to exceed that um, and again we just kind of we want everybody to share in kind of the fruits of, of our labor here um, so i i know that you know when you put it on facebook or whatever it's like i mean we're inviting people, but are are you really being invited? You know, so we're saying this is our personal invitation. The men of your parish are invited. Um, we're glad to recut our advertisements in any way um, or anything else that we can do to make them feel personally uh, invited. So please don't hesitate to share, to ask questions, and to share this with the men of your parish. Thanks. Great, thanks, Vince. And we are, um, you're seeing the flyer that Vince has sent to me, but also you can, we can send the link to their page, their website for their parish, and that it's also linked there. And Benny will put that in the chat notes. So we thank you for that. And I hope it is wonderfully successful. Keep us updated on that if you would be so kind, Vince. So. Thank you, will do. Okay, thank you. Next, uh, I'd like to go ahead and go to Karen Max. Karen Max is the the lead person in this region for uh, Catechesis of the Good Shepherd and is a wonderful contact person for anything you need. Uh, so I would like to turn it over to Karen to give a brief overview of what's going on. I'm seeing a lot more interest in Catechesis of the Good Shepherd now that we're kind of out of some of the COVID woods as it were. So that's exciting to see. So I'll turn it over to Karen. Thank you, Michelle. Hello, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to be um, a part of your meeting this morning for a few minutes. Um, I'd like to, first of all, just share with you that um, I work for the United States Association for the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. I'm the director of formation for the, on staff for the uh, CGS USA, um, but I um, also happen to get to work remotely, so I live in Marietta, Georgia. So I've um, um, been a part of uh, Catechesis of the Good Shepherd in this area for about 30 years. And, uh, um, and we have a lot of interest um, brewing again about Catechesis of the Good Shepherd in various denominations, but most particularly we're seeing this in the Catholic Church. So we're really happy to see this happen. Um, as you may uh, be aware of the fact that Catechesis of the Good Shepherd is a um, is for children ages three to 12. 
uh, right now, although we are doing some work in working with infant toddlers as well. So I want to talk about that in just a minute. We are, it is a very um, hands-on approach, really developmentally appropriate for children and helping them come to know God's love for them and to become and enjoy that love that God has for them, as well as helping them become better um, aware of the liturgical, um, the aspects of the liturgical signs and symbols that make up our the mass and um, listen for uh, the word of God and cultivate that reflective spirit of, of listening for what, what God's words have to say to us. So we, we blend, put together both Bible and liturgy in, um, in, a, in a really unique way in some ways and also very hands-on way because that's what, how children are learning sensorially, most particularly from the very youngest ages. You know, I would have to talk with Michelle a little bit to, to confirm my list with hers about how many uh, churches have Catechesis of the Good Shepherd in our area. We are, you know, in Metro Atlanta, we have that one area, but then beyond that, we have many now starting in smaller churches and parishes outside of Metro Atlanta. Um, so I would probably have to keep updating my list a little bit too as well. I have um, about 16 churches on my list that are just within the Atlanta Metro area. But there are, I think, some more. And there's some that are in a pause still right now um, that I've recently learned about. Um, we also have Catechesis of the Good Shepherd um, being offered to children through um, the mission, with the Missionaries of Charity. And um, I've been working, actually, because now they have a home, which is amazing. Um, when working with the sisters in establishing two atria there, along with another catechist, and uh, we have a level one and a level two that we're going to, going to be able to set up and arrange in the home, which is fantastic because we can now not have to move materials all the time. So um, there we will serve the Burmese community and Spanish speaking community. So, um, so in terms of atria, and then another an unusual perhaps atria is um, a Monday uh, Catholic homeschooling group, mostly, but not necessarily all, for families in the Marietta area who have not, who are not able to be in their own churches with an atrium. Maybe their churches can't start it, do not have the space, and uh, it's being hosted at an Episcopal church. But they've been doing this for 10, 15 years now, and they are resuming now. They had not, during COVID, they had paused. We have been having, um, responding to training um, quite a bit in our area. We just completed two level one uh, courses in Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. One was at St. Thomas More that ended in August and uh, had started earlier this year. That was the first uh, level one, first Catechesis of the Good Shepherd um, offering it within the perimeter. Most of the courses that we have been able to serve um, offer had been outside of the perimeter. So that was a big step. To, uh, we were indicator and uh, we, pr I believe we ended up, we had um, 17 or 18 people for this course, but I think we ended up um, connecting with about 10 different churches that, um, and most of whom were Catholic. So um, we had a couple of Anglicans in our, um, in this course and uh, an Episcopalian as well. We also ended a, a, a course that was at uh, um, Our Lady of La Salette up in uh, Canton, Georgia. And that course had been paused for a, over COVID as well. So it finally got to finish. We were so happy for that. And it but that, that had also parishioners or, or catechists coming from Cumming area um, and Cleveland up in that area as well as that church. So that was exciting. We have just started a level two for the, which is um, the level one works uh, is training catechists to work with children who are three to six years old. So preschool primarily level two um, <clears throat> is training catechists to work with children who are first, second and third graders. And uh, we have just started a level two uh, formation for catechists at St. Thomas Aquinas that started uh, just last month and will continue until next July. 
Um, but meanwhile, I've continued to have requests for level one again, and we always seem to have to start level one. So I'm in conversation with St. Thomas Aquinas about hosting a level one, but it won't be until next year. We are, um, as are with our association, um, um, our the CGS USA, we are going to be able to uh, sponsor a infant toddler catechist formation at Ignatius House Retreat Center in March of 2023. It'll be a week long part one and then part two will be the following March. This is a new initiative for us as an association. This is, uh, a, in fact, one in which we have been given a grant from the Lilly Foundation, and we're um, anticipating, hoping to get to the second part of this grant. But we have offered formation in um, that's ex seminal formation in working with parents with infants um, and also in toddlers, and then how to arrange a sacred space that would be given for toddlers. And that work has been going on since about 2015, 2016 in, a, in courses. And there are places around the country, pockets around the country, where there are either churches or Montessori schools, Catholic Montessori schools, who are beginning these toddler atria and, um, and helping us in our ex exploration and observation of how to be, best meet the needs of these families with very young children and, and helping them come to know um, well, first of all, many times it's helping the, the parents themselves to strengthen their own faith, but also help to guide them in uh, nurturing their children, the little ones. So it's exciting because we have not been able to sponsor a course in Atlanta yet. So now this is one that we'll be starting here. So this may be of interest to, to all of you as well, because we're meeting this need of the youngest, the families with young children. Um, so those are some of our upcoming um, and existing courses right now. And, uh, and some of the atria that we have going, we're excited that we're also meeting a need between some of the parishes and what they want to offer to their families, but also in some school settings. St. John Newman is continuing with, as an example, St. John Newman is continuing offering catechesis of the Good Shepherd to the preschool children. And uh, and so I'm I'm encouraged by seeing that that kind of um, work of being able to say what can we how can we offer this in a in a school setting as well. So I'm happy to answer any questions you may have about catechesis of the Good Shepherd. What were those dates again, Karen, for Ignatius House? For Ignatius House, it's going to be. Uh, let me just double check. It's March 24th. Hold on a second. Um, and I'm excited that we are, that will be a, both a resident course as well as offering for people locally. Okay, it's going to start on March the 20th and go through the, the following Sunday, the 26th for part one. And we will have that course registered. All the courses that we have available are actually show up on our website, cgsusa.org, under a uh, tab that says learn and courses for adults. So um, we're usually updating those courses as they are registered with us um, on a regular basis. So, but that's the part one dates are March 20th to the 26th for 2023. That's exciting, Karen. Thank you so much. Thank you for the overview. Um, so if you have any questions, Karen, if you would be so kind before, um, to go ahead and post your contact information into the chat, um, that way okay. we can make sure that everyone gets that. And uh, then we've also sent you sent everyone the, the link to our own portion of the website that talks about Catechesis, the Good Shepherd. It's a beautiful program. I've come to really appreciate it. Um, and so excited that you're going to be helping the missionaries at charity because they're near and dear to my heart, obviously. So, anyhow, yeah, thank you very much. Very for the, if anybody too. has any questions, <laughs> yeah, they're wonderful. So, um, if anybody has any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat or uh, open up your microphone. But in the meantime, uh, I'm going to ask Alan Austin to uh, give an overview on Catholic Metro Sports. Thank you, Michelle. My son went through cat, uh, catechesis of the Good Shepherd when he was little, and it was uh, it was wonderful. We moved we moved out of state and moved parishes. They didn't have it in our parish. We were we were pretty bummed. 
but uh, it was a great experience. So big fan. So Catholic Metro Sports, so the Office of Evangelization and Discipleship has uh, is collaborating as partnered with uh, CMS. Uh, as the name implies, it is a basically a Catholic sports league for our parishes and our schools. And I've come on board to kind of serve as a liaison between us and uh, Catholic Metro Sports and to put together a vision for outreach and evangelization uh, moving forward. Uh, I know myself growing up playing sports, I had a I remember my coaches much more easily than I remember my teachers. And I feel we feel like it's such a great spot for evangelization and to do more than just teach kids how to how to throw a baseball or how to shoot a basketball, but teach them virtue as well and how to um, give them some skills that are gonna help them get to heaven. So that's kind of our goal. Um, this first year, I'm really just gonna kind of get a lay of the land. So I might be calling your parishes just to inquire if you have them or not, and also just to tell you about them. So. If you get a message from me um, about CMS, it's not a it's not a pyramid scheme. It's a it's a real thing. I'm uh, calling about. So, just want to give you a heads up, and uh, that's it. Thank you. Great, Alan. I'm glad you're in charge of that. Can't think of a better person. So, thank you so much for that. So, if you have any questions, Alan, if you'd be so kind also to put your um, contact information into the chat for us, and with you know comment Catholic Metro Sports so that people can put two and two together. I appreciate that. Um, a couple more brief announcements. Um, we are, thanks to St. Luke's in Dahlonega, our next deanery meeting will be for the Northeast Deanery. But again, everyone is invited for these. If that's if you happen to be driving near beautiful downtown Dahlonega um, on October uh, 25th, yes, 25th, um, and uh, it, Benny is going to post the the jot form RSVP into the chat. Uh, but we're going to uh, to have all those churches in the Northeast January gather again. Anybody else is welcome to join. We'd love more the merrier. So that's going to be the next deanery meeting. Uh, it's going to be from 10 a.m. to noon. And uh, there'll be snacks provided, but uh, lunch is on your own as you leave. So, uh, so that is happening. The other thing that I'm real excited about is for the first time ever, we are going to be doing an in-person Advent retreat for PCLs. So that is going to be coming up. Save the date. Yes, Lynn, I'm glad you're excited. So save the date. It's going to be December 6th. We're starting at 9 a.m. sharp with Mass with Bishop Con. And we'll go to 1.30. So we'll be having a continental breakfast. We'll be having uh, a lunch and a lot of talking and a lot of sharing. And we're it's going to be called um, Eucharist and Healing. And it's going to be led by Melissa Foley, who is here in the um, works in the Archdiocese and has an apostolate, particularly in terms of healing. So the Eucharist in terms of healing, it's a uh, O come Emmanuel, Eucharist and Healing. So that'll be December 6th. Mark your calendars. Any questions, please reach out to me. That'll be great. Uh, and last but not least for my announcements, um, we have not had a PCL orientation to, since 2019. It is time. And we're going to be doing it in person. It's going to be uh, scheduled for January 24th of 23. I can't believe I'm actually saying that word that year already. So it's uh, January 24th, 2023 from 8 a.m. to 2.30. Uh, we're probably going to, that's the, the initial time frame, but we'll probably juggle that a little bit and probably start you guys off at nine uh, and then a little fellowship before then. And the RSVP will be coming soon for that. So I'm excited for that. So anybody who has been a PCL starting in 2020 when the world imploded uh, and then through now. So PCLs include if you're a DRE, if you're faith formation, if you're a youth minister, um, if you are head of RCIA or if you're head of uh, elementary ed, any of you people paid, unpaid, volunteer by the grace of God are PCLs. We'd love to have you come to the orientation in January. So turning it back to anybody else that might have a announcement. Mary, do you have anything you want to talk about the next senior ministry call briefly? Um, just that we're having one. Our next call will be on uh, Thursday, October, excuse me, September 22nd at 10 a.m. And uh, the links are in the, uh, in, typically in Andy's memo that, that gets sent around and I think in the notes. 
and just wanted to um, send a, a word of thanks to those of you who uh, attend the call or, or pass the call, the existence of these calls uh, on to people you know who are working in any aspect of senior adult ministry at your parishes. Um, also, just the fact that I'm, that I'm here. Sometimes people will contact me just learning that, that we exist in the office and saying I have a question or I'm looking for a resource and always happy to help you. And then it also helps us know what's important to the people in the parishes um, because we can sit here and think we, we know all the time, but then if I keep hearing the same topics coming up and up and up again, um, it's certainly a sign that, that we need to be paying more attention to there. So um, again, just hope, thank you for your participation and um, just, keep spreading the word that that we're here and we're happy to help. Thanks. Thanks, Mary. Um, anything else from questions, comments, thoughts, what's going on in your parishes? How can we help you? I'm opening up the floor. Feel free to open your mic or use the chat. Nothing's going on in any of the parishes. I guess that's good news. And glory stories, guys. How are things starting at the beginning of the year? Go. I'll I'll just say this about that. Um, this is not super on topic, or it's it's slightly on topic. I just want to say I went through the CGS trainings when I was at my previous parish in Alaska. Um, and I would really just encourage anybody who's even curious about learning about CGS, um, it's going to be a wonderful meditation for you. It's going to give you some wonderful tools, even if logistically or for other reasons, um, you're not sure if CGS is going to work at your parish. I'd also say, or Karen, you might want to smack this down, but um, if you can get your pastors to go with you, that is even more important because. When you go to a training for, I mean, you go, I think my first training was a week for level one. Okay, so you you invest a week and then you come back and the pastor says, so can you explain CGS to me? And you say, no, no, I can't. I need a week at least to explain what's going on. Um, so just if you have any questions, I would just encourage you to go to it, see what it's about, take it from there. Great. I like I like the uh, happy customer uh, uh, commendations for that. So thank you for that. Um, also, Julia put in the ch chat that her numbers are up from last year. Thank you, Jesus. I, I echo that. That's great. Is anybody else seeing any movement positive towards more people coming back or more people registering? Yes. We are at St. Joe's in Athens to the point where I don't have enough catechists now. And my classes start tomorrow. So lots of prayers would be appreciated that a couple of people just appear out of the mist to help me out tomorrow. Well, I'm going to throw Father Avery under the bus for that. You can put him to work. So <laughs> We have got him so busy. I'm not sure I he sure knows what end is up. <laughs> but they're all off at the convocation. So I'm kind of just paddling here on my own this week. Well, we're going to um, offer that in prayer. Go ahead, Patrice. Yeah, along those lines, that's great to hear, Lynn. I know it's a problem and it's scary, but I also am thinking uh, that's what I've heard from two other parishes out here, Cocos and um, who else was it? Oh, um, St. Augustine Covington, that they had an increase in numbers. So I just wondered, is, is everyone else experiencing that kind of a comeback? Maybe people are feeling more settled now and getting back. Um, a lot of people, um, they said a lot of kids, that we're behind on sacraments are now coming back. So I thought that was excellent news. At St. Thomas, uh, the apostle, our numbers for adults, uh, the children are large as well, but adults for uh, confirmation for both the English and Spanish um, sections are very high. So we're looking forward, uh, looking forward to that. I'm hoping I can fit them all into one place for the English confirmation, so so God is good. <clears throat> Wonderful. 
And then we had uh, Yvonne at St. Teresa. We had a good first day this past Sunday. Very thankful to God for that. Amen. And I can just talk about, um, I'm Kathy Roger from St. Stephen the Martyr. Uh, last year we had seven confirmation students and this year we have 20. Um, I know it's like, we don't know what to do. It's so exciting. And again, space is, is the problem. And then also with RCIA, we have our first meeting tonight and we've got a great group so far that we're excited about. I think we have about 10 candidates that have expressed interest. So we'll see how many come and you know how many actually join the group. But yes, we are very excited and all the other classes are at capacity. So it's it's been very exciting. And we are still doing the Family Forming Disciples. So we still have some groups involved with that. Those that have started with that, um, the families love it. So they, they are all continuing and we're getting a few more that are joining. Great. So it's good. Good news. Thank you, Kathy. Mm -hmm. um, hey, and you guys, thinking of, of things at capacity, do you all turn people away or do you open another section or do you just crowd them all in? Great question. Right now, we are just crowding them in. We um, had to combine classes last year, so we kind of kept it that way just because we don't have classrooms. So we are just adding extra chairs. Um, actually, Father Brian is buying new chairs that are like two inches smaller so that we can fit more chairs into our rooms. So we are, we're just, you know, crowding them in. And the catechists seem to be very happy with that that they have all these full classrooms. So we're kind of keeping it um, the same as far as even our combined classes, but we just have more, more children. Yeah, and I, I that's great, Kathy, uh, because I think that's what we need to be doing, right? We need to be, people are starting to come back and I know it's scary because we feel like we, we don't have all those resources in place, but to be that welcoming, warm space, even if it's chaotic, is okay. Because think about that, that's how life is. It can be chaotic, but we want to be open. And, and that's just how I think it's gonna be for the whole year. I know a lot of parishes had you know deadlines and things like that, but we're in a whole nother space right now with welcoming people back. And if they're coming back, um, just to explain to them, you know, things that this is this is this is everyone's coming back right now you know we're, we don't have as many resources in place as we did before but we're thrilled that you're here and you know we really need that to be that source of warmth and love of christ to them even um and you know if you tell people that they're usually pretty patient and understanding that you know you're doing your best but you're happy that they're back in the in the fold in the family so that's that's beautiful Great, thank you for, for sharing all that guys. And make sure you all take a quick look at all the chat and all these wonderful things about middle school and high school with huge numbers, uh, record registrations for adult formation and all the Bible studies. Mary Beth, that is fabulous. That's what I wanna to hear too, because if we're not forming our adults, we're not ever gonna form our children. So I think that is absolutely fabulous. Um, thank you for sharing all that. Uh, briefly, Patrice, do you wanna talk anything about Families Forming Disciples and where we are with that currently? Um, sure, yeah, we are, um, actually we're working on November. So we're trying to get all of those lessons up ahead of time. Hopefully we'll be able to keep that lead. So that November will probably be, hopefully maybe sometime next week we'll have that finished. I think it's pretty safe to say that. Um, and then we'll be turning our attentions to getting some of those training videos up if you share those with your catechists. Um, and also we need to have a meeting. So I'm thinking of, I need to talk to Andy later on, <laughs> but I think we need to have a meeting for everyone doing Families Forming Disciples or any kind of family faith formation just to get a pulse for what's going on, sharing ideas. You all have actually the best and the most creative ideas. So when you start rolling and sharing those ideas with each other, um, you know, that's that's usually the most effective. So uh, we'd like to get that family faith formation community together probably in October, but we'll keep you posted on that. Great. Thanks, Patrice. And also, just so you know, we're working with a few other departments because we know that we've asked like PCLs, we ask office managers certain questions on numbers and what are you using. We're trying to get together with the other departments. So
so that we do ask you, we ask you once. Not that you're asking, I'm like, here's another department that wants the same information that the other department wanted. So we're working on that and uh, pray for us through that because that's a little bit of a learning process. So that's in in um, in the works. The other thing I, I neglected to mention is that the Archdiocesan Forum from the RCIA will be having their next uh, Initiation Ministries workshop. Uh, and it's on the, the uh, catechumenate. And that is November 8th. Uh, at 1 p.m. and that is virtual. Um, we'll probably, as I'm saying virtual, let me use that as a segue to let you all know that this is the last meeting that we will be using that GoToMeeting link. Our office is moving to Microsoft Teams, so just want you to be aware that this link will not be the link we use anymore after this for, for pretty much anything else, much less the PCL calls, which has been the standard uh, meeting link. We will be generating a Microsoft Teams link for the PCL calls, and it will be standard. So we can do it coming out through the whole year, and it will be the same Microsoft Teams link for PCL check-in calls, the monthly check-in calls. But I just want you guys to be aware, Microsoft Teams is more probably like Zoom than GoToMeeting. Um, so if you don't have it, you do not have to download the app. You can just join automatically so it won't be an issue i don't know if andy if you wanted to say anything more about that okay no, we're that's good? good michelle yeah if anybody has any questions just contact our office but you'll have that link ahead of time we'll we'll place it in the calendar and it'll be in the memo so you'll have all the info you need thanks yep. great so is there anything else anybody else wanted to bring to the floor a concern a thought a glory uh, hi this is linda again in st thomas the apostle. Um, I just wanted to mention when we were talking about, you know, accommodating as best we can, um, our Spanish RCIA normally through the years has met at the two o'clock um, Spanish mass on Sundays. And due to the fact that that's a very busy mass, very crowded anyway, we actually had to move the Spanish RCIA to Saturday night for the 6.30 mass so that we would have enough room for the um, catechumens and candidates in the church. So we are open and shifting, you know, so I, I know others have have concerns with that. We uh, we have limited space, but, um, but we're not turning anyone away. <laughs> we're doing the best we can. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Linda, and that's, that's all we can do, but great news, what great joy. What a glory that you have so many people, you have to move them to another mass and have more people. Um, we can't we can't turn away. We know we can't turn away. We know we need to serve. Elaine, you had your mic up. Yeah, so I have two things. Um, one is I spoke to um, the youth minister at St. Bernadette's out in Cedartown yesterday, and just on the same vein of everyone talking about increasing numbers, she was telling me that last year their confirmation class was 30 kids. This year they have 60 in their second year prep and 70 in their first year prep. So I don't know, I guess people are moving out to Cedartown. I don't know, but um, you know, she was saying that they, again, they kind of don't know what to do. Um, people who are short on catechists, you're not alone. Everyone is feeling that, particularly in youth ministry. But I just share this. No one from uh, St. Bernadette's is on the call. So I'm just going to say, I thought it was great. Her pastor said to the parents of the confirmation kids that we've got huge classes and not enough people, not enough chaperones or um, people you are required to sign up for at least one class to be there. So she is going to um, spend a lot of time making sure that everybody is cleared, but once they're cleared, now she'll have all these parents for five years. But um, I just thought I would share that because there are not many pastors that would get up there and say, you want your kids to go through confirmation? you need to pony up. So anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, the other thing that I just wanted to uh, mention is that I know it's been in the weekly memos, but we are having our first ever youth ministry retreat. So for I know there are some youth ministers on this call. It is October 11th through the 13th. It starts in the evening on the 11th. 
Uh, it'll be at beautiful Camp Covecrest in Tiger, Georgia. It is free of charge for you. Um, but please realize this is for youth ministers, not core members. I know you have some great core members. Um, that we're, this is just for the youth ministers this year and um, would love to have you join us. I will put the registration link in the chat um, and the registration deadline is September 30th. So please pass this on to your youth ministers if they're able to come. Um, and you know, with any luck, this will become um, an annual an annual event. So if you can't make it this year, we'd love to see you next year. Fabulous. Or in youth ministry talk, that's awesome. Yeah. Anyhow, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, if anybody has anything else last minute, now speak now or forever hold at least till next month. Um, and if anybody can quickly look at the date, hang on, let me see what speaking of next month. Okay, we have uh, October 11th. Is that, am I correct in that for next PCL call? I believe, yes. October 11th. It should be the, thank you. Uh, it should be the next PCL call and it will be a new link. Again, it will be a Microsoft Teams link. Um, there was a lot more information than even I thought that had been shared this morning. So we will be rendering this recording. We'll be putting all the chat notes in. So if you've missed anything or somebody else on your staff needs to see this, it will be posted soon. Um, and Elaine has just posted the YM retreat uh, link for registration. This is exciting. I mean, this is a retreat given for your youth ministers. Encourage them if they at all possibly can make this. This is for them. This is for their ministry. This is for their spirituality. So I highly recommend you do everything you can if you're not a youth minister to encourage your youth minister or have your pastor encourage and make sure that they have the time to go and refresh themselves. So again, I thank you. Andy, would you close us in prayer? I'd be happy to, Michelle. I'm going to use a, a prayer that's been used for our Eucharistic Congresses, um, but we can offer it up for our Eucharistic Revival and for all of our intentions. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord Jesus, we give you all praise and glory, all thanks and honor for the gift of your body, blood, soul, and divinity, your real presence in the Eucharist. As you suffered for our sins, let us be ever grateful for your infinite mercy poured out upon us in our sinful brokenness. Let the abundant blessings of the Eucharist be our source of healing, strength, and peace. Allow us, Lord, to be generous with our love for others, reaching out to those in need, always mindful of how you have been present to each of us in our most desperate times of need. In the acknowledgement of your abundant and unconditional love, let each of us at all times be humbled, blessed, and nourished by the most holy, blessed sacrament. Amen. And glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless everybody. Thank you, everybody. Everyone have, have a wonderful day. Have Thank a wonderful you. Day.